Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum frequency stack. And I'm gonna try to do my best to really explain the thought process on how you could figure out the solution by yourself. I do think it's doable, even though it is kind of tricky. This is a pretty unique problem. So we're told to design a stack-like data structure, but it's gonna be different in a few ways. I mean, it's gonna be similar that we're gonna be pushing elements and popping elements. Those are really the only two operations we need to do. But when we pop, we're not gonna pop the most recently added element. We're gonna pop the most frequently added element. But also, if there's a tie between what's the most frequent element, then we are going to pop the most recently added element. So in that sense, if there's a tie uh, with the most frequent elements, it's going to behave like a stack, like a normal stack. So the first thing you might actually try though with you know thinking of most frequent is a uh, heap probably. But the thing is when we're adding elements, we might add the same element multiple times and then keeping track of that with a heap to update the counts of elements in a heap, then you have to search the heap and that's really not efficient. That's not what a heap is for. But first, let's just try to figure out what we're trying to do before we try to figure out how we're gonna actually implement it. And the best way to do that is definitely always thinking of examples. Don't just read the problem statement and try to guess at which data structures you should use. Try to actually go through some examples and see what might work and what isn't gonna work. So let's say we're pushing a bunch of elements. Let's say we're pushing a five and we're pushing a two and we're pushing a one. Actually, let's change that last one to a five. Okay, so these are the elements that we push. I mean, I don't know how we're gonna store these yet, but you know, this is the stream of elements that we pushed. Now it's time to pop. When we're given a pop operation, they don't give us a value. You can see it's empty. So we have to figure out which element to pop. That's the hard part. Now, the obvious thing is we want to know what's the most frequent element from here. And there could be a tie, of course. So in reality, we want to know the frequency of the most frequent element. So that's one thing we wanna know. I'll call it the count of the most frequent element. That's something we wanna know. Now, how exactly are we gonna know what's the count of the most frequent element? Well, as we add values, we could actually just keep track of the count of each value that we've added so far. That's not really anything crazy, right? That's pretty standard. You do that in a lot of problems. We're not really being creative yet. So that'll be pretty easy to do, right? We can have a hash map counting you know, each value, the count of each value, and we can also have a separate variable to have the maximum uh, count or whatever happens to be the maximum in our hash map at that point. So we're also gonna keep track of the single maximum. And we can update that pretty easily. As we you know, add a value, we'll just increment the count by one. If we see that the count of this is greater than our maximum, then we'll replace the maximum count. So this was probably the easy part, but now for actually popping an element. Suppose we know that the maximum count of a value in the values we've added so far is three, right? That's the maximum count. And we know that from our max variable. And now what we'd want to do is find all elements with a count of three. So let's find all elements with a count of three. Let's suppose we can magically do that for now. We'll figure out how to implement it later. So there's only a single value with a count of three right now, and it's five. So this will be pretty easy for us. We'll just pop the five. Okay, now suppose we want to pop again. And since that was the only element with a count of three, now we know that our max count will be decremented because that was the only element with a count of three. Now we know that our max count is going to be decremented down to two. We know for sure it's going to be two because we know at least one value will show up two times, the value that we just popped. Because before there were three fives, now there's going to be at least two fives. And of course, we'll decrement the count of five in our hash map as well. So now we want to pop again. We know our max count is two and we want to now find all values with a count of two. Okay, let's suppose we can magically do that again. We found all values with a count of two. 
Well, now we notice there's actually a tie. There are multiple of them. So suppose we also want to know the order that these elements were added in. Let's suppose that this is the order, like the, the order that they're in. This is the order that all the values were added in. So let's suppose we have that order. So it's these two values, five and four. We know that this is the order they were added in. Which one of them would we want to pop? The one that was more recently added. So right now we want to pop four. So now we can decrement the count of four from our hash map, but what about our maximum count? Should we decrement that? No, because there's still one value left with a count of two. So we don't need to decrement our maximum count. And now if we were popping again, we'd see that, okay, only one value has a count of two. We can pop it. And then at that point, we would decrement our max count by one again. And now let's say we want to pop even one more time just to let it all sink in. Then we'd get all elements with a count of one because we decrement our account from two to one. Now we get all elements with a count of one. There's four of them, right? All four elements remaining, which makes sense. And this is the order that they were added in. So we'd want to pop the most recent one. We'd pop two, okay, pop it. We don't decrement our max count because we still have elements left with a count of one. So then we we pop another one. We'd pop this one, it's the most recently added. Again, we'd pop the most recently added. And again, we'd pop the most recently added. And then finally we could decrement our max count down to zero. So are you kind of seeing the pattern or the idea here? It would be really nice if we could separate values based on the counts of those values. So we have all values with a count of three. We have all values with a count of two. And we have all values with a count of one separated out. And we're doing it in a kind of creative way, you, right? Because five occurs three times, but I've separated one five in a group of ones, one five in a group of twos, and one five in a group of threes. So the way we're going to be mapping this, we're going to be mapping the count of a value to the group of values with the same count in this kind of creative way, right? But what uh, data structure should we use for that group? The best way would probably be using a list because we want to preserve the order, right? Notice how this purple group, we want to preserve the order of them. They're orange, we want to preserve the order. And so now if we wanted to add another value, suppose we wanted to add a three now, what would we do? Well, first we would take three and get the count of three from the hash map. The count of three is uh, not two, it's one. But since we're adding another three, uh, the count of three is going to become two. So let's find the group of uh, where the count is two. Well, uh, it's easy when you color code it, right? Purple corresponds to the group of twos. We would add a three and it would belong to the group of purples. And before we jump into the code, let me illustrate this one different way and it'll definitely make sense. Written this way, it might be even more clear because what you might be realizing is that we have individual stacks where now, let's suppose we added a one value. Well, the count of one is zero. So now the count of one is going to become one. So we're gonna find in our counts over here, we're gonna find one. We're gonna find, okay, this is the stack or the group that we wanna add it to. We're gonna add it to the end of that group. So this is like an individual stack. But at the same time, if we wanna add a five, well, the count of five is three. We're gonna know that from our hash map. Uh, but now the count of five is gonna become four. So now we're gonna have a new group over here for fives. And also if we were gonna pop a value now, where would we pop it from? Well, of course, we're not gonna pop it from here or here or here. We're gonna pop from the most frequent group. We're gonna pop from over here. So if we were popping every element from here, we'd pop in this order here, then here, then starting from the end of the, this stack, just pop like that. Then starting from here, like that. So you can kind of tell that doing it this very efficient way using hash maps, uh, we can do every operation while push and pop in O of one time. So now let's finally code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And one, we're gonna have a map 
uh, for the count of each variable. And we're also going to have a separate variable for the max count. Initially, it's going to be zero because we haven't added any elements for it. And then we're also going to have our groups, or you could call them your stacks because it's like a stack of stacks. Now uh, we could make it a list if we wanted to. You definitely can do it like that. You remember how we're, we're gonna be starting out, okay, the count of one, and then we're gonna have a list. We're gonna have a count of two, and then we're gonna have a list. This will work. But notice how we're not starting at zero, we're starting at one. So if we were doing it like this, we'd have to have either an empty stack in here or we'd have to add some math down below to do like a minus one operation. And I don't wanna do that. It's just slightly easier to do a hash map in this case. Okay, so for the push operation, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. So we're adding a value. So we wanna first get the count of that value, but uh, th this value might not be in our hash map. So the way I'm gonna handle that is by using a function in Python get for a hash map. Basically, if this value doesn't exist, it'll return a default value of zero. Now, to get around this, we actually could have just used a default dictionary, but I kind of feel like that's cheating in Python. It kind of makes things almost too easy. And I'm almost scared that, you know, the interviewer might not like that. So I just kind of practice it this way. You could also use if statements if you want to. But so this will return the count of the value, but we want to increment it by one. So let's do a plus one like that. Now, what if th this uh, count is greater than our max count, self dot max count? Well, then we're gonna do two things. We're going to, of course, update the max count. That's uh, obvious enough. But also we're going to add a new list to our stack because we just exceeded our maximum. So we're gonna add a new list to uh, for the count for this new like max count. So self dot stack at key val count and then add a new list, a new stack for that one. And then finally at the end, since we're guaranteed that now we'll actually have a stack uh, for this val count, we'll go ahead and append the value, uh, which was ultimately what we were trying to do. Oh, and also let's not forget to actually update the count of this element as well. So the count of this value is gonna be val count, which makes me realize we actually didn't need the val count variable anyway, but it's kind of nice because it's at least a little bit shorter than writing this out. So now for popping an element, so it's our job to figure out which element to pop. Uh, and lucky for us, we've done it in an efficient way that it'll actually be pretty easy. So we have our stacks. And actually, I realized I probably should have put an S at the end of this to make this plural. I'll do that really quickly right now. Okay, so now that it's actually called stacks, let's find which stack that we're actually looking for, which is the one that's gonna be self.max count. We want the stack with the most frequent elements and we wanna pop from that stack. So this, this popping value is what we're gonna return, but we can't just return it immediately because we also have to do a little bit of cleaning up before we return this. We definitely have to uh, decrement the count of this value that we're gonna return by one because we're, we just popped it, of course. Also, what if popping this value made the most frequent stack empty? What should we do then? Well, at that point, we know that our max count should also be decremented by one. So let's do that. So if self.stacks of this max count is an empty list now, an empty stack, so we can put not in front of that. So if that's the case, we will say self.max count decremented by one. I forgot the plural, it's an S. But now that is the entire code. You can tell that yes, these are uh, constant time operations. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.